Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News reporters John Vias and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, Maddie Shipka with the community calendar, and Joe Viscioni with sports on this Super Bowl weekend. Uh, we lead with two rather unsettling crime stories this week. A Revere man has been indicted on multiple counts of rape in relation to an incident at a Burlington hotel. Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan's office released a number of indictments that were handed down between November 29, 2018 and January 10, 2019. Including on the list was the case of Sean Ostler, 42 of Revere, who was charged with three counts of rape. According to the DA's office, Ostler is alleged to have sexually assaulted an adult female on March 8, 2018 at a hotel in Burlington. The name of the hotel was not released by authorities. The defendant was directly indicted by a Middlesex Superior Court grand jury in December of 2018 and arra arraigned on January 4th. Clerk Magistrate Michael Sullivan ordered the defendant to wear a GPS monitoring bracelet. The next scheduled hearing in this case is February 20th. In another crime story, a man who allegedly attempted to photograph a teenage girl in a state of undress in a fitting room in the Burlington Mall has been arraigned. Middlesex DA Ryan and Burlington Chief of Police Michael Kent announced that Luchner Michelle, 31 of Framingham, was arraigned on January 25th in connection with an alleged attempt to photograph a minor in a fitting room at the Burlington Mall. Michelle was charged with one count of photographing intimate parts of a child. Judge David Frank released the defendant on personal recognizance and ordered the defendant to stay away from and have no contact with the victim or witnesses and to stay away from the Burlington Mall. The next scheduled hearing in this case is April 3rd. On January 24th at approximately 4 p.m., Burlington police responded to a report made by two 16-year-old females that a male had attempted to record one of them inside a private fitting room at Forever 21 in the Burlington Mall using a cell phone. Through mall surveillance footage and witness statements, authorities were allegedly able to locate and identify the defendant as the individual who allegedly attempted to take cell phone footage of the female victim. This charge is an allegation and the defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. After a somewhat lengthy and widespread discussion on Monday night, town meeting narrowly approved a proposed ban on single-use plastic bags at Burlington retailers. The ban includes all checkout bags that are made of plastic and are equal to or less than three mils thick. There are exemptions to the ban, including bags used for produce other than bulk items, other exemptions include laundry or dry cleaning bags and bags sold in packages containing multiple bags such as trash bags, storage bags, and those used for pet waste and yard waste disposal. According to the language of the Warren article, the ban will go into effect 120 days after it approves by the state attorney general. Town clerk Amy Warfield estimates the ban will be in effect starting this fall. The ban was first proposed by two Burlington High School students, Stevan Shah and Ricky Vidim, who argued that plastic bags have caused significant environmental damage. They argued the bags cause significant amounts of pollutants to be released when they are made and that they do not biodegrade, so they last in the environment for long periods of time. They said the bags ends up, end up in trees, on the ground, and most significantly in waterways and oceans where they break down into tiny plastic particles that can be eaten by fish and other underwater wildlife. During Monday night's discussion, the main opposition to the ban was expressed by people concerned that getting rid of plastic bags would only move people to use more paper bags. Shah and Vidim said that the ideal response was for people to use reusable bags, but others said that they thought that the likely option was paper. Further, some argued that the production of paper bags, which requires the cutting of trees, would also negatively affect the environment. However, others argued that the impact of Burlington banning plastic bags, which 90 other Massachusetts cities and towns have either done or are considering, wouldn't have a big impact on global climate change either way. Instead, they said the ban would likely reduce the amount of plastic waste found on the ground and in the waterways in town. In the end, town meeting voted 52 to 45 in favor of the article. 
BH student, BHS students in the Burlington Rotary Club High School Interact Club donated about 700 pairs of socks to the Disabled and Limbless Veterans Organization and local Veterans Affairs hospitals to help veterans in need of support. B News Director Rich Hosford was there and has this report. A table in the Burlington High School cafeteria was covered with something other than trays of food on Tuesday evening. It was nearly overthrowing with packages of new white socks that had been collected by students in the BHS Rotary Interact Club for donation to the Disabled and Limbless Veterans Organization and local Veterans Affair Hospitals to help vets in need of support. It's an annual tradition for the club and a popular one among area veterans. This year we ended up collecting around 700 and um, in addition some extra suits and so we have the uh, representative Don Marcelino from that association come in and uh, that's what we're doing here today is donating those to him and uh, it goes to a cause and we're proud to do it. The sock donation is just one of the charitable actions the Interact Club undertakes each year. They participate in the spectacular Halloween haunted house each October and collect food donations for Rise Against Hunger that goes to people in underdeveloped countries. Charity and community service are the foundations of the group and one of its main goals is to foster a sense of community participation among the students. Uh, really just a sense of like volunteerism and uh, purpose and, and the good that comes from something like this. Um, I think a lot of high school kids and a lot of these kids in the club do get the chance to volunteer and donate to certain causes, but being able to see Dom come in himself, who is himself a uh, disabled vet, or, um, you know, and, and see the help that it gives to him and his association is really beneficial because they get to see the actual product of their work in fundraising and uh, volunteerism. The club's student leaders say that they think it is important to give back to the community and especially to those members of the armed forces that risk their lives to protect our nation. I believe all of our club comes together to do this and we enjoy doing it because many of these men and women who have served our nation come back and they have the invisible wounds of war which include uh, PTSD and other such disabilities and we enjoy doing it because we know that we're supporting uh, on the front lines. We're not on the front lines per se, but on the home front we're supporting our men and women who go abroad and come back. I really think that's important to give back to the veterans because um, as they've come in and talked about, like they really find it, like they've sacrificed so much for us and like they really need the socks and like their feet are all ruined from the war and serving for us and for our freedom. So it's really nice to give back to them and give them something when they've given us so much already. The students say that participation in the club has taught them the value of volunteerism and service and that they are inspired by the work of the Burlington Rotary Club. Um, I think I've learned like a lot about like being part of the community and really how to interact with other people and involve everyone and then interacting with the Burlington Interact Club which is all adults from Burlington so it's really helped to interact with them as well. So the Interact Club, our main goal is service above self and thinking about others before ourselves. And the Interact Club is like the youth version of the adult Rotary Club. So we do many of the activities that the Rotary Club of Burlington does. Finally, the adults that work with the students say they are impressed with their dedication to the club and its work. Well, you know, I mean, high schoolers, they're busy. They have homework, they have school, they have sports. And I think as the years go forward, there's more and more responsibility that does fall on them, both academically and socially. Uh, so to donate the time to do something like this and show up uh, for all these meetings and participate and help out with these different fundraisers and volunteer activities, it definitely speaks highly of their commitment and their passion for doing stuff like this. From the BHS Cafeteria, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford. When we do these BHS uh, student uh, news stories, I'm always amazed how polished and poised they are on camera. Now back to town meeting, where an article intended to make Burlington more attractive to life science companies passed overwhelmingly on Monday night. Article 2 proposed changes to the zoning bylaw to change definitions and alter requirements listed under the maximum floor area ratio to make it easier for life science companies and their laboratories to locate in town and be approved under town guidelines. Planning Director Kristen Kastner said the bylaw changes were important for Burlington's continued economic development as life sciences are the biggest trend in the Boston area, with Cambridge considered to be the world leader in the field. However, due to rising prices and rents and a section of the workforce who would prefer to work outside of the city, Kastner said Burlington is a prime location to lure future high-tech life sciences companies to town. 
One limitation in that effort was Burlington does not have zoning areas where biotech and life science companies can open by right, and that this by bylaw change would address that issue, meaning they'd only have to go to the planning board for uh, site plan issues. Town meeting members seemed in favor of the proposed article, though there were a couple of questions, mostly about community safety. Under the bylaw, the town prohibits the presence of biosafety level four laboratories as defined by the Centers for Disease Control, which includes organisms that are highly dangerous and infectious. However, as a couple of town meeting members pointed out, the bylaw does allow biosafety level three laboratories, which under the regulations include research on some dangerous things like West Nile virus and yellow fever. Dr. Ed Weiner, a longtime member of the Board of Health, said that unlike industries of old in town that contaminated Burlington soil and water, modern life science companies operate under numerous regulations and with a larger focus on safety. With those assurances, the article was passed. We have one more note from town meeting this week. There was a special tribute to longtime member Virginia Mooney, who passed away last October in the form of a resolution in her honor. Let's take a look. All right. I, Shari Ellis, request that the town meeting vote the following resolution. Whereas the town of Burlington has lost a valued member with the death of Virginia Mooney, we wish to recognize and honor her for her years of service as one of the original representative town meeting members and her 27 years of service to this body, as well as her three years as a select woman and many other years of service on the many boards in the town of Burlington. On behalf of its members, we vote this resolution the 28th day of September in recognition of the achievements of Virginia and gratefully acknowledge her many contributions to this town. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, Sherry. The Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce held their third annual Black Tie Gala at the Cafe Escadrille, where local businesses can give back to the community through charity organizations. B News reporter Robert Paris was there and has this look. It was a special night for everyone who came together to give back to the community. Last Saturday night, the Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce held their third annual Black Tie Gala benefit fundraiser at the Cafe Escadrille. The event was a way to let local businesses learn a little bit about the local charities in Burlington. This is by far my favorite event that the, that the Chamber puts on. It brings together, um, right in the same place, the business community and those that serve our community through the charitable um, organizations that are here tonight. All of the money raised goes directly to them and it gives an opportunity for some of the businesses that, that donate anonymously to actually see some of the people that are, that are contributing um, some of the services to our community that are, that are so important. A new charity joined the group this year, Burlington Women Aid. To our uh, repertoire we've added uh, Burlington Women Aid, uh, a group of women that have uh, a, a way to connect with some of the families here in Burlington that might be in need that might normally not ask for it, but they're, uh, they're able to reach them in ways that, that most organizations haven't been able to. They're doing great work, just like all of the charities that are here tonight. Among the charity organizations that came out, there was a special sponsor that had a chance to take the floor during the presentation. Well, we were here supporting a great effort for eight great charities here in the Burlington area. We have four businesses right here in Burlington, so we feel like we're really a part of the community here with a real responsibility to give back. This is a fantastic event, a great giving back moment. We have 240 attendees in there, sold out event, ultra, all, a great group of people all wanting to do the right thing. And uh, it's just a great thing to be part of. It's where we should be tonight. I had a chance to speak with one of the board members from Burlington Women Aid. I decided to join the Chamber of Commerce um, because they contacted us a number of times and invited us to a couple of their events. Um, and when I became one of the CHOPS champions, um, they told me that if we joined the Chamber, it would be a really good way to grow our nonprofit. And it has been. So it's been like a really great experience. Finally, the BACC is always helping the Burlington community and its local charities around town. I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for all of us to have a great time, look firsthand at some of the work that's being done in this, in this town um, from these charitable organizations, 
but even more importantly, to give the businesses an opportunity to meet those people. Through the taxes that we have here, there's a lot of town services that are provided through the, through the commercial tax base along with the residential tax base, but it's really having people meet each other for the first time. It's a great feel-good event, and uh, we sold out again. We, we're very excited to get it going tonight, and it's, it's going to be a party that people will be talking about until next year. From Cafe Escadrille, I'm Robert Paris for B News Weekly. Another week, another scam to report on. Once again, scammers are trying to prey on people's better natures by pretending to be in need of help when all they are really after is easy money. Middlesex Sheriff Peter J. Katusian said he is warning residents to be on the lookout for a new scam falsely claiming to involve an inmate needing money. Why would an inmate need money? According to Katusian's office, an individual reportedly receiving a call claiming an inmate who was trying to reach him to have money placed in an account for telephone access. The reporting party, who was immediately suspicious of the call, told officers he was not aware of anyone he knew being held at the Middlesex Jail and House of Correction. Katusian says that if you or someone you know receive a similar call, he encourages you to immediately contact the facility at which the individual is purportedly being incarcerated to confirm its authenticity before making any payments. Burlington High School art students joined with students in the area to participate in the Lexington Art and Craft Society's annual regional high school artist show. BNU's director Rich Hosford went to check it out and has this report. The Lexington Arts and Crafts Society Gallery was full of art admirers this past Sunday to view work done by young artists. So young, most of them can't even vote yet. It was the 23rd annual Regional High School Artist Show, which featured work by students at numerous local high schools, including Burlington High. The annual show is a highlight for the Art Society and fits in with their mission to support the community and local artists. Um, part of our mission statement at Lexington Arts and Crafts is to give back to the public in general and definitely by working with schools and young people it's a huge way to give back not only do we have these shows free for the community but it's really the high school show features um, young artists and the, that would be our future so it's a give give situation for art teachers and program directors, as well as art students, the show is a great opportunity to see what other schools are doing in their curriculums. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to profile uh, the work that we do and for other schools to profile the work that they do at the top levels. Um, and, uh, and it's great for the teachers and the um, directors of the programs to be able to see all the different work and to, and to network with the other uh, department heads. Having their work hung in a gallery is also a great way for students to feel part of the art world and get a taste of what being a professional artist is like. When you put your work in a show or when you sell your first piece, it's, there's a lot of excitement there and there's a lot of pride and it's nice, you know, your family, your friends, they come in and they see your piece hanging and I think that does a lot for the artists and keeps them going. It is a great opportunity to see your work in a different venue. You know, we do a, a couple shows uh, every year at, in Burlington, uh, and they're used to that. But to, to have a more professional-looking gallery that your work is in um, and to be treated uh, special in this way, I think is, is great. So they get, a, a, they get a taste of what it's like to actually have their own show um, or to be in a group show um, outside the regular art classrooms and I think it's a it's a way you know basically you, you create artwork to share with other people so this shares it with a lot more people. I also had an opportunity to talk to a couple of the Burlington students who showed me their work and explain why they chose these particular pieces to be placed on display. Um, well I really like the light that we got in it and the sh harsh contrast in it and like the story behind it which was just I went to uh, the building with a bunch of my friends so it was a really fun day and yeah. <laughs> I like the color that's over here and I tried to like show the different colors that were in the squash rather than just like one color. So, I don't know. And what is it like to have their work up in a gallery? It feels weird. I mean, I I don't know if I want to know what they think of it, but like I kind of do to be honest. I just want to know what like their feedback is because it's always good to be criticized and figure out what to do better later. Uh, really proud actually, yeah, it's a really great opportunity and just having it exhibited here like kind of gives you the confidence to carry on with art I guess, so it's really fun. <laughs>
From the Lexington Arts and Crafts Society, IMB News Director Rich Hosford. A proposed schedule change for next year's school term would limit holidays off to federal holidays in an attempt to expand the winter break and have students head off for a summer vacation near the middle of June. Pine Glen Principal John Lyons said in a letter to parents the principals were asked to share the calendar with parents to get their input. He said the biggest change in the 2019-2020 calendar is a move to only recognizing federal holidays. This would mean adding Good Friday, which falls on April 10th in 2020, as a school day. The addition of April 10th as a school day would allow them to keep schools closed for two full weeks between December 23rd and January 3rd during the first school vacation and still have Friday, June 19th as the 180th day for students. An additional change is scheduling the parent conferences and professional development days on consecutive days in November rather than having them in different weeks and interrupting uh, numerous weeks of, of classes. This could be less disruptive to teachers, students, and administrators. You can find a link to the proposed calendar change at bcattv.org forward slash bnews. Steve Wasserman is stepping down from his position as vice chair of the Burlington Public Library of Trustees, Board of Trustees, and reminisces on his 15 years as a member of, uh, of that board. B News reporter John Vias went to talk to him about his years of service and has this report. The Burlington Public Library's Board of Trustees is a group of six elected officials whose main role is to govern and set policies for the library. Recently, former vice chairman Steve Wasserman has stepped down from his position after 15 years of many a great contribution to the library. Steve uh, runs great meetings. I'll definitely uh, say that much. Uh, he's been wonderful to have uh, on the board of trustees because he's been able to provide quite a bit of focus uh, to the trustees as well as act as an advocate. Uh, you know, he's come out at the head of the trustees uh, and he's been chair uh, for many years because he is one of our strongest advocates in the community. I was one of six members of the Board of Trustees, and our job is to oversee the operation of the library and to make sure that everything is running right. We would manage the budget, uh, actually develop the budget, and then uh, Mike would then, the, the library director then takes the budget and uh, does what has to happen with it. At a time when digital media was making a splash in the world, libraries needed to show that they were up to date with their resources being a good time for Steve to join the board. Uh, I started, I think, in 2006, and technology has changed. And because technology has changed, the media that the library uh, possesses has changed also. From has gone from mostly all books. It went from books to books plus audio, and then books to audio and video and then books to electronic media. And the reference department has gone from row after row of reference material down to almost nothing because everything is done on the internet now. So, so it's changed quite a bit and the way we uh, do things has changed. And it's uh, growing and uh, the library is, is just as vital as it, has, as it has been as it was in 2006 when I originally got on the board. Uh, I certainly found him to be a wonderful resource when I was coming in as a new director. Uh, he provided a lot of time for me to bounce ideas off of him, uh, to ask about uh, historic issues uh, that we had had. Uh, we're really losing great institutional memory uh, in Steve's departure, but I know that I'm going to be able to speak with him. And so I'd you have to have a very strong interest in the library and the town and to see making sure that, that, that the seniors and the students and and people of diversity in this town have got everything that they need in their library. Steve Wasserman is still keeping busy with volunteer work in and out of the town of Burlington, but he'll be missed by his fellow board members. I have been involved in the library now for many years. I'm also involved in uh, other things here in town. I am uh, a precinct warden which uh, for Precinct 7, so I'm still doing that for the elections. I still do other volunteer work out of town. So my plans basically haven't changed uh, very much. I've just taken one item off of the table, and my guess is in the not too distant future, something is gonna replace it because I'm, I, I like a full schedule. From the Burlington Public Library, I'm John Vias for B News Weekly.
We are coming off a week of some real cold temperatures, not as cold as Chicago, surely. And to find out what's in store for the next cycle, we go now to B News meteorologist Peter Brown for this week's forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Manny Shipka to see what's happening in Burlington. Hello everyone, and this is Peter Brown with a look at your weather for the next seven days, and I hope you've all been surviving the bitterly cold air that we've been seeing the past few days here in the Burlington area. And starting out our period on Friday, getting into the weekend, looks like we're going to be starting off pretty chilly again. We're going to be seeing temperatures only in the low 20s, and look at this, going into Friday um, evening into Saturday morning, looks like we're going to be down around zero again. So. If you have to be out and about Friday night into Saturday morning early, you may make sure you get bundled up around here in the Burlington area. It is going to be downright frigid still, well below our average highs for this time of the year, which should be in the mid-30s. Now, unfortunately, we're going to be a long ways away from these record highs, but as we get into the middle of next week, we may see temperatures flirting with the 50s, maybe even the, as high as the mid-50s. So. That's going to be something to keep an eye out and look forward to. And of course, as we then go on into the end of the first week of February, I know it's hard to believe that it's already February. We're going to be looking at temperatures. Again, should be only in the mid-30s, and that's about where we're going to be as we get towards the end of the period. And as of course, as you notice, the days are getting longer, and it is definitely noticeable. So as we go ahead, I'm going to take a look at what our temps and precip are going to be looking like for the next 7 to 10 days here. As you can see, up here in the Burlington area and all of New England, looks like they're calling for a chance of above average precipitation. Now, normally if it was going to be really, really cold, we'd be worried that that would mean a lot of snow, but looks like our pattern is going to moderate quite a bit, so that's going to come in the form of maybe some pretty heavy rainfall as we get into the start of next week. As we go ahead, and we're going to take a look at the um, temperatures that we're expecting for the next 7 to 10 days, and look at this. This is something we haven't seen in quite a number of weeks here especially look at this up here in our area that we are expecting for the next seven to ten days temperatures to be above average for a change this time looks like the cold air is going to be retreating again unfortunately back out to the poor folks in the midwest but out to the west coast finally they've been having beautiful weather this winter of course nice and warm and they're going to have to come in with the cooler temperatures from now on now as we go ahead let's take a look at our seven day forecast and take a look at some of those temps and the weather coming up Again, if you're going to be out having any plans this weekend, it's going to be beautiful, actually, even starting on Friday. Just a mix of sun and clouds. Again, pretty chilly if you have to be out there and around on Friday. Temperatures only in the low 20s. But look at this. We add about 10 degrees almost every day. And by the time we get into Sunday, it's going to be really nice. Might be uh, 39 might be a little bit cool. We may actually be seeing temperatures getting up into the low 40s on Sunday. So for the Super Bowl, if you have to go out, going out to any parties at all, it is going to be absolutely beautiful weather. Now, of course, Monday and Tuesday, this is where we're going to introduce the chance of maybe some rain and maybe some heavier rain on the order of maybe half an inch or so. But look at the temperatures, especially on Tuesday. 51 may be a, a little bit too conservative in terms of the temperatures. We may actually be pushing up into the mid and upper 50s on Tuesday. So gives us a chance to thaw out a little bit here in the Burlington area. As we get towards the end of the week on Thursday, we introduce the chance of maybe a couple of light snow showers as another Arctic cold front comes into our area and it's going to knock our temperatures back down to about average in the mid-30s. So everyone, get out there, enjoy the Super Bowl, go Pats, and have a great week and enjoy the weather. I'm Maddie Shipka, and this is your Community Calendar. Get some tasty treats for a good cause. From February 2nd through the 16th, the Burlington Community Scholarship Foundation will be having the Whoopie Pie Wagon Valentine Pop-Up Shop. The wagon will be directly across from Wegmans at 3rd Ave, opening from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Portions of the sales will benefit the Adopt-A-Class 2030. For more information, visit the Adopt-A-Class 2030 on their Facebook page. Come and enjoy a fun-filled day dedicated to winter. On Saturday, February 9th, the Burlington Parks and Recreation Department will be having their third annual Winter Carnival at Simons Park. There will also be sledding, marshmallow roasting, and a chili cook-off. Everyone is welcome and the event is free. The chili cook-off is also free, but pre-registration is required. For more information, visit burlingtonrecreation.org or call 781-270-1695.
learn a little bit more about the contagious virus, the flu. On Sunday, February 10th at 2 p.m., the Burlington Public Library will be having their monthly event called Science Sundays. Dr. Marta Gallia, an assistant professor of molecular biology and microbiology at Tufts University School of Medicine, will be teaching about influenza. How the flu virus operates, how our body fights it off, and the challenges and advances in treating this is what she'll be teaching. She'll also be teaching about the influenza vaccination. The presentation is ages 8 and up. For more information, visit Burlington.org or call 781-270-1690. I'm Maddie Shipka, and this has been your Community Calendar. The Red Devils are battling hard this winter season. For the latest sports news, we now go to Joe Viscioni for this week's sports report. Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Viscioni for your weekly sports report. The Red Devils wrestling team was back home on Wednesday night to take on the Shawshank Valley Tech Rams after a long stretch of road games. B News sports reporter Robert Paris was at the game and he has this report. The Burlington Red Devil wrestling team clashed with the Shawshank Rams on Wednesday evening inside the Burlington High School gymnasium. The team generated more sweat than points, but in the end they couldn't seal the win. Well, we practiced pretty well, you know, kids work hard, we do a lot of drill and do a lot of live wrestling. I mean, kids put in the work, they could have wrestled a little better tonight, but I don't know if that's more of a tribute to how good Shawshin is maybe than how we wrestled. Although it was a loss, the Red Devils managed to get some points during the match. Cam Soda had some great takedowns there right at the buzzer to send it to overtime and then right in overtime that kid's legit. I think they've ranked fourth and fifth in the state between them. Um, I mean both Soda boys looked good on their feet. I spoke with a couple captains about the unfortunate loss. You know we had a couple wins. Um, still need to improve on the year. Yeah, obviously it wasn't really what we wanted, but they've got a lot more guys than us, so we gave up a lot of forfeits. Some of us, I mean, showed up when they needed to, some didn't. So that's what we got to work on, work on just small positioning and things like that. Finally, the boys will continue to practice as they will be facing the Bulrica Indians on Saturday, February 2nd at 10 a.m. in the BHS gym. Um, we'll work on a couple techniques that we weren't very crisp on tonight, you know, but just... We, we pretty much do the same thing, you know, we just, just kind of drill them, drill them, drill them. Repetition is the best teacher, so we'll stick with that. Uh, we're just going to finish the week strong, come back here and uh, uh, wrestle hard and hopefully win. Yeah, it's hard for me to comment on that because I'm, I'm not really practicing, but I think we're just definitely going to work on the little things that we need to work on. Yeah, I mean, we want to end off the week strong, so we're going to go over I mean, things that we need to come out strong at the end. From Burlington High School, I'm Robert Paris for B News Sports. In one of the biggest wins in recent memory, the boys basketball team took down Arlington Tuesday night in Burlington 59 to 51. Against one of the league's most dominant teams over the past decade, the Red Devils took the lead in the second quarter and never gave it up. Ryan Colhane scored 22 points to lead the way, while Mike Melanson hit several clutch big shots. Burlington is 7-8 and still in hot pursuit of a spot in the state tournament heading into a game in Stoneham on Friday. The boys hockey team is also still in the playoff hunt. The Red Devils skate against Wakefield on Saturday for some important Middlesex League Freedom Division action. The boys host the Warriors at 4 o'clock at the Ice Palace and the girls also play on Friday against Wakefield starting at 6. On Monday, two important Burlington events will be taking place. At 4 o'clock, the track and field teams will be in Boston at the Reggie Lewis Center for the Middlesex League Championships. The boys gymnastics team will be in action on Monday, hosting Attleboro at 7 o'clock. And good luck to Tom Brady on the, and the Patriots as they take on the Rams in Super Bowl 53 on Sunday. Anyways, that's all for your weekly sports report. I'm Joe Viscioni, and back to you guys in the studio. Another week, another photo to highlight. This week's photo shows that even New England animals are excited for the upcoming Super Bowl matchup between the Patriots and the L.A. Rams this Sunday and are rooting for Tom Brady and the gang to bring home another ring. It was sent in by Kathy Johnson and shows her dog Lucy Lou in her team jersey after watching the AFC Championship against the Kansas City Chiefs that led to the Pats getting another shot at a Super Bowl, Super Bowl victory. Can we hear you all say, let's make it six? Thanks for the photos, Kathy, and go Patriots. We'd like to see your photos. They could be of something you see around town, the weather outside your own door, or even photos of your family members 
friends and pets, whatever you think is interesting and would like to share with us and the rest of the community. Email your photos to bcat at bcattv.org with the subject line photo of the week. And that is it from the news desk here at B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher, along with B News director Rich Hosford, B News reporters John Vias and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, weather, <laughs> excuse me, Maddie Shipka with the community calendar, and Joe Vicioni with sports. Go Patriots! <laughs>